In the deep cold of last winter, I ran a stove test so that I could talk about the performance of canister stoves vis-a-vis -vis liquid fuel stoves in time for this winter. So here's the findings from that test. Hello everyone, I'm Jason. Canister stoves do not work in the cold. I hear that a lot. To be fair, more so online than in person, but nonetheless. Sure, when we look at big commercial cold weather expeditions, we see liquid fuel a lot. But many times, when we look at cold weather and high altitude climbs with small teams, we find canister stoves. So is this really about cold weather performance, or is it about needing to serve many people or produce many, many boils? So, on an evening in mid-February, facing a pending overnight low of minus 11 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 24 Celsius, I made a hot water bottle, put that bottle in a minus 20 degree Fahrenheit rated sleeping bag, and inserted six isobutane canisters. The next morning, I tested two minimalist canister stoves, but still with regulators, the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe and the Soto Windmaster. I tested two integrated canister stoves where the pot couples with the burner, the MSR reactor, and the Jetboil Minimo. I tested two satellite canister stoves that can invert the canister, the Optimus Vega and the GSI Pinnacle 4 Season. These function a lot like liquid fuel stoves, drawing liquid into a vaporizing tube at the burner that converts that liquid to gas. And I tested two liquid stoves, the MSR XGKEX and the MSR Dragonfly. For all of those stoves, before placing them out overnight, I weighed out the system components along with the fuel. That following morning, the temperature was minus 6 Fahrenheit, minus 14 Celsius, when I placed a titanium pot on each stove, filled those pots with snow, and then proceeded to melt snow until each stove produced one liter of boiling water. I also used a wind guard around each stove that was not an integrated stove pot combination. I wanted to know a few things. How much time does each stove take to create that one liter of boiling water? And how much fuel does each stove use? Which, of course, is related to the time of use. The end game was to extrapolate results to a hypothetical long weekend trip with two climbing partners heading out into the cold. So now let's walk through the results. At the start, you can see with a minimal amount of fuel, just 110 grams or the equivalent of one of those smaller four ounce canisters, the liquid fuel stoves are heavy. Not surprisingly, the integrated stoves are the next heaviest, then the satellite stoves, and finally, there's a reason why minimalist stoves are named as such. What is behind this, though, is that the canisters have a lot of weight in the metal of the canister itself, while the liquid stoves do not. Their bottles are bigger, but lighter, meaning the more fuel we carry, the more the canister stoves will start to catch up to the total weight of the liquid fuel stoves if we're using the same amount of fuel. But the liquid fuel stoves don't exactly sip fuel. Besides the GSI Pinnacle 4 season, the two liquid fuel stoves used the most fuel, and they also took the longest to get a full liter to a boil. And while time correlates with fuel use, there is also a time spent not doing other things to consider. If we are taking longer to cook, we have less time to build snow walls or take care of our feet or whatever. Now, if we were to only take 110 grams of fuel out with us, either through one of those small canisters or by limiting the weight of the liquid fuel, how many boils would we get? Obviously, one of the benefits of liquid fuel is that you can easily customize the amount of fuel you wanna take, but using our 110 gram limit, we see several stoves that wouldn't have enough fuel to complete a second boil. For the canister stoves, this is a big deal as you need to potentially bring an entire other canister to get that second or third or fifth boil. Interestingly, the Jetboil Minimo sips fuel and easily outperform the other stoves in this metric. But now let's turn to our hypothetical trip. We are assuming two people out over three days. We are also assuming that they will melt snow and bring to a boil a total of 24 liters of water, three liters to drink each day, so 18 liters, and half a liter two times each day for each meal, so six liters. Given the stove and pot weight, I then calculated the weight of fuel needed, understanding that each time we crossed over using 220 grams of fuel, we needed a new canister and all of its added metal weight. And also we assumed the 30 ounce or 850 gram liquid fuel containers. So each time we crossed over 850 grams, we added the weight of a new container to those stoves. 
The starting weight shows that, like I alluded to earlier, as we need more and more boils completed, we see the liquid fuel stoves start to come back into line. Interestingly, it's the satellite stoves that end up needing a lot more fuel and therefore a higher starting weight. But those satellite stoves are also faster, meaning less time sitting over the stove. Here, again, the liquid fuel stoves are the two worst on the graph. Taking both factors, time and weight together, we end up with this 2x2 two two graph, where the quadrants are divided by the average time and average starting weight across all the stoves. For at least this shortish duration hypothetical trip, it's the minimalist stoves that perform best across these two considerations, along with the Jetboil Minimo, despite it not being nearly as light of stove. This is simply because the Mini absolutely sips fuel, even in the cold. Clearly, this little test is only backyard science, both literally and figuratively. Not everything could be controlled for, like decreasing pressure in almost empty canisters. There wasn't a super large sample. Heck, just running back-to-back -back boils on an already hot pot will change the results. But there are a few conservative conclusions we can make, and the first is that, clearly, canister stoves can function in cold weather, we just have to manage our canisters a little bit. Also, this does at least seem to suggest that the higher number of boils we need, the more liquid fuel starts to make sense. If we are either out there for a long time or out with a lot of people, the weight trade-off disappears because the packaging around liquid fuel is so less hefty. Do you have a favorite winter stove? Tell us what you use and why in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you want to support us. For more information, you can go to our website at www.shortguysbetaworks.com. You can watch a similar stove test video we did comparing heavier, more fuel-efficient stoves to lighter options in the summer, or you can check out our entire gear-specific playlist. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.